The modern web browser is a great thing, especially now that you can install an add-on or a plug-in that lets you view the web the way you want to. Unfortunately though, we've come to a decision point for the modern web, between content creators and you, the viewer. In this episode, I'm going to talk a little bit about ad blocking. More in a moment. Welcome to Blog Oklahoma. I've tried a few different ad blocker add-ons over the years for both Chrome and Firefox browsers. They all pretty much do the same thing. They block ads. However, many of these newer ad blockers have started to block more than just the advertising. They're blocking JavaScript and other web elements from running, which in turn breaks many websites. So for about three and a half weeks now, I haven't used an ad blocker at all. I don't even have one installed on any of my workstations. The functionality to many of those websites that were broken by the ad blockers has returned. Of course, my user experience on many of these same websites hasn't been good. There are too many intrusive ads, too many overlay ads that require you to click on something, and way too many auto-playing video ads. As a content creator, I understand the need for advertising. You should get paid for your hard work. But when your advertising is overly intrusive at the point where as I, the viewer, has to make a decision whether or not I'm going to return to your website, or if I do return, I'll just reinstall an ad blocker. Lately, to get around the need for an ad blocker, I've been relying on Evernote's Clearly add-on for Chrome. It doesn't block anything, it's just an alternate way to read articles at the click of a button. And I've also stepped up my use of Feedly, an online feed reader. I scan through the articles without the need to visit any specific website. I don't know at what point these websites will get that yes, advertising is important, but the visitor experience is even more important. If your advertising is driving people away or forcing them to use an ad blocker, you're doing it wrong. And when you get them to start using an ad blocker, guess what? You're ruining it for all the other content creators. Now, if you as a visitor want to use an ad blocker, fine. I was using one myself for years. But I want you to keep in mind, for every ad you block is money out of someone's pocket. And mine included. I have small, unobtrusive banner advertising on many of my websites. Now, I don't make any money on my websites. And honestly, that was never my intention. I think of the Google ads I have on my sites as a tip jar. <laughs> If you click on an ad, I get a few pennies. And every year and a half or so, Google sends me a check, and I get to treat Donna and I to a nice dinner out. <laughs> so if you block the ads on my site, honestly, it's not a big deal. However, there are people out there who rely on the advertising for their living. They have bills to pay just like you. And if you really like their content and you block their advertising, well, guess what? That content's not going to be there much longer. So, here are a few suggestions for you. If you do install an ad blocker, keep it off for most of your web browsing. Only turn it on for those sites who behave badly. Another option is to whitelist all those sites you wish to support. Or, if you can, find an ad blocker that uses a blacklist instead of a whitelist. That way you're only blocking the bad actors and not everybody. Ads on websites are not going anywhere anytime soon. Ads will continue to evolve along with the rest of the web, and eventually they're going to work their way around these ad blockers. On the other side, as long as there's one paranoid person out there not wanting to be tracked through advertising, which for the most part is harmless by the way, or an advertiser finds a way to put up an intrusive overlay flashing punch the monkey ad, ad blockers will also continue to evolve. The choice, as always, is up to you. Content? advertising. We'll see. Writer's block can happen to anyone. There are times when you just cannot get the creativity to flow at all. <laughs> We've been there. We all have. You know what? We here at Blog Oklahoma want to help. 
We've been compiling a database of writing topics just for this occasion. So when you need an idea to write about, just check out our Writing Topics Idea Generator at blogoklahoma.com slash topic ideas. Did you know that the Blog Oklahoma podcast has its own cafe press store? So if you'd like a coffee mug, t-shirt, or a tote bag with the Blog Oklahoma podcast artwork on it, please head on over to cafepress.com slash podcast. I'll also have a link to it at blogoklahoma.net. And just a reminder, I've also created a couple of playlists for the bonus musical selections I share in the episode show notes. You can get to these with the shortcut for Spotify. Go to blogoklahoma.net slash Spotify. And for YouTube, go to blogoklahoma.net slash YT playlist. Again, I'll have these linked in the all-important show notes, and I hope you enjoy the bonus musical selections. And thank you for listening to the Blog Oklahoma podcast. I'm happy to announce, as of October 4th, 2015, Blog Oklahoma has 889 registered Oklahoma bloggers. Your feedback is important, so please feel free to contact me with your comments or questions. You can get hold of me in a multitude of ways. Just visit blogoklahoma.net slash contact for more information. Check our show notes for all the links and bonus material for today's episode. This has been Kevin Latham for Blog Oklahoma. Until next time.